welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Melissa Chalker, Deputy Director of the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. The Foundation's mission is to enable seniors to live with independence and dignity in their communities. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging to provide information and resources to boomers, seniors, and caregivers. The primary focus of the program is to provide important information and connect people to community-based programs. Today we're going to talk about Medicare. Open enrollment season is here and there are things that everyone needs to know. In addition to that, fraud is something that Medicare recipients should always be on the lookout for. So we turn to today's guests for information on both of those topics. I have in studio today with me Charles Clarkson and Tunde Akinrolabu from the Senior Medicare Patrol of New Jersey. Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you very much for uh, sparing some time for me today. I know that you're both very busy. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having us. Would like to start with you, Charles, and if you could just remind our audience, because you have been with us before, what the Senior Medicare Patrol of New Jersey is. Well, it's a federally funded program, and our job really is to educate seniors about Medicare and more particularly about fraud, waste, and abuse in Medicare so they're not victimized. Mm -hmm. And we basically go throughout the state of New Jersey. Every state has a senior Medicare patrol, but mm -hmm. our jurisdiction is New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We go throughout the state and basically we give lectures to senior groups, church groups, any group that will invite us really sure. to come and speak to them because mm -hmm. it is a message that is very, very important. Sure. So we are going to touch on the fraud uh, thing at some point during the show, but I did want to start um, with open enrollment since we did talk about that uh, as well. Uh, open enrollment is going on, and um, what are the Correct. dates for that? The open enrollment dates are October 15th to December 7th, and Obviously, they picked December 7th because it's Pearl Harbor Day, and I guess people can remember that's the sure. last day they can make any changes yes. in Medicare. Sure. So um, let's talk about, since you said that, um, what changes can people make during open enrollment? Well, there are, there are a number of things uh, seniors can do. You know, if you're in original Medicare, which means you have Part A, Part B, and you have a Medigap policy and then a drug plan, mm -hmm. you can actually leave med original Medicare and go to a Medicare Advantage plan. If you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, you can change uh, Advantage plans. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, I no longer want a Medicare Advantage plan. I'm going back to Original Medicare because I have greater choice, and you could actually go back to Original Medicare. Okay. You can also change your prescription drug plan, and actually we recommend that you review your drug plan every year sure. to make sure that there isn't a better plan in 2015. And I do want to get into that, uh, the right. drug plan specific stuff, because I know that there's a lot to know about that. But I do want to just skip back for one second, because uh, you did talk about original Medicare versus Medicare Advantage. So right. if you could just explain to people what the difference is between those two. OK, well, let's start off with the Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. Those are really private companies that are offering all the services that Medicare covers, but they do it through a private company, okay. like Anetna or Humana. Mm -hmm. Okay. And basically, if you're in one of those plans, you basically have to follow the rules of the plan. And most of those plans have networks. So the big right. drawback of the Medicare Advantage plan is you have to go to a doctor in a network, mm -hmm. a hospital in a network. Mm -hmm. You may need prior authorization for certain tests. Right. If you need to see a specialist, you may have to get a referral from a primary care physician. So it, it, is, a, it is quite different from original Medicare. Mm -hmm. Now, original Medicare is... I have Part A, which is my, my hospital coverage. I have Part B, which is my doctor coverage. Mm -hmm. And I have usually a supplement plan to supplement what Medicare doesn't pay. And then I have a drug plan, OK? Mm -hmm. You can find that in the Medicare Advantage plan, but you don't need to buy a supplement. And you don't need to buy the drug plan because the Medicare Advantage plan has That's all that in it. OK. So, some people, so why would you join one over the other? Well. If you don't have to buy a supplement and you don't have to buy a drug plan, well, then maybe if you're healthy, you could say, I could save money by going into a Medicare Advantage plan. Mm -hmm. And some of those plans can have zero premiums. Whereas mm -hmm. in Medicare, you would have to, you should buy. You don't have right. to, but you should buy a supplement and a drug right. plan, and that could be another two to $300 more a month. Mm -hmm. And if you're not spending it, you mm -hmm. can say, maybe I should be in a Medicare Advantage plan. Sure. Great. I think that's very helpful for the audience to know the difference between those two things. So if they have original Medicare and they're interested in uh, or, or need a drug plan, um, this is a time when they should be looking, uh, even, if, even if they already have a plan, they should be looking um, to maybe join a new plan or make sure that their current plan still covers their medication. So we talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, that's correct. Because every year the drug, which is Part D of Medicare, the mm -hmm. drug plans change. Okay. They're private companies, mm -hmm. so the deductible can change. Okay, the premium obviously can change, and the most important thing is the formulary. The list of drugs in the plan could change. Right. So you don't want to be in a plan that maybe 
has dropped your drug for next year. Right. Because then you're going to the drugstore and you're going to find you have to pay 100% for that drug because you didn't compare plans from this year to next year to determine whether or not you still had all the drugs in the next right. year's plan. Right. So where can um, someone go to find the formulary for their drug plan? Okay. Well, there are there are a number of options. Okay. Uh, one is to go to the Medicare.gov website. Okay. And on the left hand side, it says Find Healthcare Plans, and okay. you can click on that and try to do a either a general search or a personal search yourself. But that can be difficult for some people, especially seniors who don't have computers. Mm -hmm. Also, you can call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program right. in New Jersey, which we would recommend highly because they're also federally funded and they're unbiased. They will try to find the best plan for mm -hmm. you. And for us, the best plan is covers all my drugs and it's the cheapest plan for the entire year. Ignore right. the premium, ignore the deductible, right. ignore the co-pays. What does it cost me over the entire, entire year? year? And that's what I really want to know. Right. So you mentioned, um, which I think is great, the state health insurance program, which people call SHIP for Correct. short. And that's a county-based program. So yes. every county has. Every county ca has. You can, mm -hmm. you can call up the state SHIP program and mm -hmm. they'll refer you to the county. Right. Great. Excellent. Uh, and so um, what other resources or tools um, should people be aware of during open enrollment besides their looking for their drug formulators? Well, you can call up Medicare, mm -hmm. and they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. But don't wait to the last minute because <laughs> okay. you can, it can be quite a long wait on the mm -hmm. Medicare telephone line. But you can also ask them to do a search for you on the telephone and cause have your Medicare card and all your drugs mm -hmm. because the big thing about the comparison is what drugs am I taking what dosage am I taking and how many times a day am I mm -hmm. taking them right. because that's very important to put that into accurately into the into the program so sure. you can get the right comparison otherwise you're really mm -hmm. just wasting your time sure. now you know people always say well what if I add drugs in the year well you know then you have to just be careful that the drug you're adding is on the formula already or mm -hmm. you have to appeal to the plan to add it. Right. And that can be quite difficult. Sure, sure. Uh, and so is there um, the plans, uh, or Medicare I should say, uh, also send some type of notice during open enrollment? or Well, the pl if you're already on a plan, mm -hmm. you're going to get a notice of change okay. from the plan. And unfortunately, that's a very thick document, mm, and yes. I don't think most people read it. Probably not. But it says the changes in your plan, including the list of the formulary. Okay. And you can check, but, you know, some things can change. So if you're not sure, call up the plan and say, is my drug in the plan next year? But that really isn't enough because there are always new plans being added. Okay. So you want to do a complete comparison and see what else is out there. Because if you call your own plan, they only know about themselves. Sure. They don't know about the 29 other plans that are mm -hmm. available in New Jersey, and that's what you're trying to compare. Sure. So Medicare.gov or calling the Medicare calling hotline. Medicare. Calling 1-800-Medicare. The best ways to find out about new plans or, or things things that you need to know about during open enrollment. Right. right? And if you want one-on-one -on -one counseling, the mm -hmm. state health insurance, insurance assistance, the SHIP program right. is, is really, really good. Great. Great. Well, I think that's all valuable information for our viewers to know about open enrollment because it is that specific uh, and very short period of time from, uh, from uh, mid-October to early December to, to really make those changes. So, um, And you're right to advise people to do so early right. um, so that they're not waiting last minute and then uh, have to wait in a long uh, wait list uh, on, the, on the phone when they call Medicare. So that's great. Um, we did mention uh, at the beginning of the show that the main uh, mission, I guess, of, of the Senior Medicare Patrol is to really um, educate and help prevent and uh, alleviate fraud uh, and abuse in, Medi in Medicare. So can you just explain to um, the audience what fraud is in Medicare and what fraud might look like? Well, yes, fraud is, is in most cases, is the intentional abuse of the system. Providers really cheating Medicare to get more money than they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to, you know, it can be abuse, it can be waste. If, let's say, they do unnecessary medical tests, mm -hmm. you know, that also can be problematic. But really, it's the intentional fraud we're trying to stop. And we want seniors to understand what that is because it's costing them money. Sure. Every year, Medicare is estimated to lose $60 billion in fraud, waste, and abuse, and we pay for that. So how can a, a Medicare recipient know that um, perhaps there might be a fraud issue um, attached to their Medicare? Well, there are, there are a couple of rules that we want to pass on to seniors. Number one, always protect their Medicare number. 
because mm -hmm. that number is like a credit card and they just shouldn't give it out unless that person they know they can trust, mm -hmm. like your doctor, okay? And of course, the next biggest thing is to read the Medicare summary notice. That's a statement they get from Medicare usually 90 days after they see a Medicare provider and it lists mm -hmm. all the services they got, what Medicare approved, what Medicare paid, and how much they may have to pay themselves. Well, they really should take the time to read it carefully. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything on there is what they actually got so they're not being cheated. Right. So the important thing, and that, again, that's called a Medicare summary notice. Correct. And that will come in the mail after you've seen a provider. Correct. Uh, and they should um, look for anything on there that they don't remember receiving or a, a visit doesn't that they didn't. Doesn't look right. Doesn't, yeah. Something doesn't look right. Yeah, anything that looks suspicious, mm -hmm. we, lo we like them to advise us. Right. And we can help them. Sure. So if they do see something like that, they can call you directly at the Senior Medicare Patrol. Correct. Uh, and you can look into and investigate that uh, issue for them. Right. We have 52 currently active volunteers, that wow. we and we assign a volunteer to an individual beneficiary, mm -hmm. and that person's job is to get all the facts, that they consent, mm -hmm. and try to resolve the issue in their favor, obviously. Wow, that's really incredible. So 52 volunteers. 52 currently So this volunteers. is really a, an effort of, uh, of volunteers who you know, can come in and, and really advocate on behalf of the Medicare recipient who has a fraud. And if there are any issue. older adults who would like to be volunteers, please have them call <laughs> us. <laughs> that's excellent. That's excellent. That's very good to know. Uh, so this is great uh, to talk about. And we mentioned at the top of uh, the show that you do educate also seniors about it. You talked about all the groups you go to. So we did want to turn uh, to Tunde because uh, you do a lot of this outreach as well as, as Charles. Yes. Um, with seniors directly. So um, can you talk a little bit about um, about how you educate seniors on the issues of fraud and, and things like that? Oh, well, we, um, we're required to educate seniors through the state of New Jersey, mm -hmm. throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, and we do this through many ways. The primary way we educate seniors is through what we call group education sessions. And what they really are, they're 45 minute, about 45 minutes to an hour long presentations. Mm -hmm. Um, where we teach uh, seniors how to protect themselves from Medicare fraud, um, detect it, and report it. And um, we book these presentations through various sources. Uh, I would say our, our primary source are senior centers, mm -hmm. um, but we also book presentations through church groups. Um, we, have, uh, we partner with offices on aging. Mm -hmm. uh, we partner with organizations like the AARP. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a lot of uh, presentations at AARP chapters, um, as well as we speak on panels and conferences throughout the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So basically anywhere where we can reach seniors and there's a senior audience, we'll give a sure. presentation there. Sure. When you, when you meet with seniors face-to-face um, -face in, these, in these settings, what are some of their primary concerns or, or the most common complaints uh, that, they, that they have in, in regard to Medicare? Well, the, the, there are a lot of questions. As a matter of fact, um, one of my presentations, I have a list of what I call the challenging Medicare questions that seem to always come up mm -hmm. um, with seniors during presentations. And um, there's many of them. I'll give you an example of a few. Uh, one of the questions that, that um, a lot of patients have is the issue of consultations. You know, um, beneficiaries will say, well, you know, I was in a hospital a couple of weeks ago, stayed there for three days, and 10 different doctors walked into the doctor's office, mm -hmm. into, the, into the hospital room, mm -hmm. and waved, and then billed Medicare for what they call a consultation mm -hmm. fee. And that seems to happen often. Right. So, what I tell them was a couple of years ago, the consultation fee or the consultation code was the most misused billing code in Medicare. Really? Right. That's interesting. Because it's very easy for a doctor to walk into a hospital room, mm -hmm. wave at the beneficiary, walk out, and then bill my Medicare for a consultation mm -hmm. fee. So what Medicare did at that time is they eliminated the consultation code. Now that doesn't mean that doctors cannot charge consultation fees because mm -hmm. of course that's still a um, a needed uh, service. Mm -hmm. What it really means is they made it more difficult for doctors to bill for the consultation code. Okay. So in order to bill for the consultation code, you also need to provide ad adequate documentation to send, send over with the claim. Okay. So you, when you send the claim to Medicare, you're sending the claim as well as adequate documentation for the consultation mm -hmm. code. So what they were hoping was it takes away the incentive for doctors to bill for consultation codes now that right. it's more difficult to get paid for it. Right. So the, the main point would be that a, a consultation should only be, happen now when really needed and not just uh, kind of as a standard 
procedure um, for doctors to do. Absolutely. Uh, and so seniors should be a little bit more relieved that they won't necessarily have that, um, and, right. they can, and they can see that on their Medicare summary notice when it comes, right? Well, yes, yes. yes, they can. Now, remember, <laughs> this is still very new. Sure. Um, they eliminated the consultation code a couple of years ago. Okay. There's still not much evidence mm -hmm. on whether or not this is stopping doctors from actually coming into rooms and waving and still attempting right. to charge that consultation right. fee. Right. But we do know that if they do tar charge the consultation fee under the old code without ac adequate documentation, yeah, then Medicare is going to reject that right. that bill. Great, that's great. I think that's a really um, you know great thing to share that uh, that seniors are really concerned about and voicing um, when you see them. What are some of the the best tips uh, or the the most common tips that you give to seniors uh, at these presentations to help them avoid fraud? In addition to what we've talked about already, um, you know, are there other things they can do to protect themselves? Well, one of the big things I, I tell seniors is to always ask questions. Mm -hmm. Ask questions. When you're, do not assume that your doctor has your best interest in mind. So if your doctor's giving you tests and exams, ask questions why you need the t test, ask questions why you need the exams. The more you ask questions about your Medicare summary notice um, in the doctor's office, the more your provider is going to know that you are policing your own health care and the less they're going to try to take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great. So um, I think uh, that this is really great information to share uh, for our seniors. You know, you go out and you do these presentations uh, for them. And so to, to be able to share it in this platform, I think may, hopefully some more seniors are, are seeing it. And maybe uh, some more organizations will contact you to have you come out and talk to them uh, about it. So uh, are there other um, tips uh, for preventing fraud? Um, uh, do you suggest seniors that I'll keep maybe a log of their, um, of their yes. medical visits? Yes. So um, the Medicare summary notice, it comes in the mail once mm -hmm. every three months. Three months is a long time. A lot could have happened. You could have been in the hospital for one or two weeks. Right. Uh, you could have had many doctor's visits. We mm -hmm. always recommend that you keep your own medical records. That's mm -hmm. why at every presentation mm -hmm. we hand the personal health care journal. Okay. And basically what it is, it's a, um, a calendar uh, where you can write down the, the date, the type of service, and the name of the physician, as much information as you can, keep your own records so that when the Medicare summary notice comes in the mail, you have something to rely on and compare to um, instead of relying only on your memory. Great. So, this so is that's, the personal that's what it, yeah, it's, a, it's called the personal health care journal, and yes. you give these out at your presentations? Yes, we All do. Right. Um, is there some way that um, people can request to receive one if they haven't? been uh, to a presentation? Absolutely. Uh, if you um, are looking for any educational material on Medicare fraud and abuse from the Senior Medicare Patrol, you can give us a call at 732-777-1940. Great. And we also book presentations throughout the state. So if you're, if you're listening to this and you belong <laughs> to a senior group or a senior club or a church group um, or an office on aging, then please reach out to us, especially senior centers, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll book a presentation for you. So this book, I, I do want to get back to the book, sure. um, it has the information in there where they can write down when they saw the doctor, what you know, what procedures they may have done, any hospitalizations, and then compare it to their Medicare summary when it comes in the mail. That's correct. Uh, if they don't have this book yet, mm -hmm. if they haven't been able to receive it, they could do this in a calendar or a notebook sure. or something so that they at least have a record to compare um, to their Medicare summary when it Absolutely, comes, Absolutely, yes. Great. That's great. Uh, so this is a, a great tool. Um, I know uh, Charles mentioned not sharing um, your Medicare number with anyone, yes. and I think this is an important thing for us to remind seniors because there are a lot of scams uh, out there that happen, not just in med with Medicare fraud, but fraud in general that's targeted at seniors. So I think it's good to remind people that uh, Medicare um, is not going to call you or email you and ask you for your number. Um, correct? That's something we that's can tell correct. people. Oh, that's yeah. absolutely right. Yes. So we should make sure that if someone gets a call like that, they question it and not mm -hmm. give any personal information, including right. actually, their Medicare we, or Social we actually Security say numbers. You should hang up the phone because the number right. that appears on their screen mm -hmm. is probably going to be a fake number anyway. Right. So don't give out any information at all. Right. So mm -hmm. if they get a call like that, they should hang up and they hang should up. call 1 800 Medicare and say, I received this call. And or call the Senior Medicare or Patrol. Or call senior sure. med someone like the Senior Medicare Patrol and that would be able to, you know, assist them uh, in making sure that they don't provide any personal information that they shouldn't be. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, and likewise, you know, and they're not going to send you an email or, you know, any of the if emails and phone calls <laughs> right. from people claiming to be Medicare are generally not legitimate, right. Right? right? Okay. And also guard your Medicare card. So another, okay. another, one, another question that we get a lot from beneficiaries are, where should I keep my Medicare card? Okay. Um, if I keep it at home, 
and I'm on the bus and I fall unconscious and I have mm -hmm. to be I have to get taken to the hospital, then how are they going to know who I am mm -hmm. and are they going to be able to treat me? Sure. So our suggestion is always for 95% of the time to keep your Medicare card at home. Mm -hmm. Why is that? If you if there is an emergency and you're rushed to the hospital, it's required by law that hospitals have to treat you regardless of your insurance. Right. So they will treat you eventually when you get better, of course, they're gonna to wanna to get paid, so they're right. gonna need your Medicare information. Right. And that's if that's also if the hospital doesn't have you in the system already. You right. could uh, they could already have your records in the system. Right. So keep your Medicare card at home in most cases. The only instance when it's time when you would need to bring your Medicare card with you is if you have a new doctor's appointment um, or you're going to see a new provider for the first time, mm -hmm. they might require that they see, they actually Medicare see card. the Medicare card. Right. So bring it, bring it with you on that time, mm -hmm. let them store it in their records and then go back and keep it at home. Yeah. That's the first that I've ever heard that tip because most people would think, oh, I need to bring my insurance card with me. It's one of those things you should carry in your wallet. Right. But you actually are recommending that people leave it at home in a safe place uh, because, as you said, they will get treated at the hospital <coughs> and then a family sure. member could bring it to them in the hospital right. if they need to see it and, Absolutely. and verify that's, all that's, those that's things. It. That's, that's, uh, that's actually a really good uh, tip that I, hadn't, uh, that I hadn't heard yet, so mm -hmm. I'm glad that you shared that with us. Sure. Um, any other uh, out-of-the-box tips that you've got for us? Well, what I, what I usually like to end with at the end of presentations is a common issue that's related to Medicare. It's not, it's not quite considered fraud, but I think it's worth mentioning. It's the, it's the issue of observation status okay. versus admitted status. Mm -hmm. um, so Medicare will pay for your skilled nursing facility um, services mm -hmm. as long as a beneficiary has been admitted into a hospital for three or more days. Okay. So if you've been admitted to a hospital for three or more days, you get out of the hospital, you go to a skilled nursing facility, Medicare will pay 100% of your services for up to 20 days. Right. Now, the problem is, the, the key word in this is admitted. Right. You can be in a hospital for three, three or more days, laying in a bed, eating the food, hooked up to the monitors, and it feels like you've been admitted into the hospital, but you have not been admitted into the hospital you're under a status called observation okay. status. Mm -hmm. And if you have been in observation status and you leave the hospital and try to go to a skilled nursing facility and stay there for 10 or 15 days, Medicare will not pay for your services. Right. You can try to appeal it, mm -hmm. but it won't work. Right. So people around the country, um, beneficiaries, seniors, are getting burnt by this. Right. So the important thing to know is when you're in a hospital, First day, second day, as soon as you get there, you ask them what your status is and why. Right. If you're under observation status, ask why. If you believe that you should be admitted into the hospital, work with your doctor to try to get you admitted into the hospital. Right. Now, th the doctor can only go so far because the hospital mm -hmm. also has the final say. Right. So if you're able to switch your status to admitted, admitted you leave the hospital, then you know Medicare is going to pay for your services. Right. But if you're not able to switch your status and you leave the hospital under observation status, just know that Medicare is not going to pay for your skilled nursing facilities if you decide to go to a, a right. rehab center. I think that's really great um, to share. We have heard about that as an issue, and I think that um, uh, CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, is working on um, overseeing um, that as an issue because there are two sides to it. Um, you know, sometimes people don't need to be admitted, sure. but they do need to be observed. But it also has a, a effect, a consequence in regard to payment um, for services beyond the hospitalization. Um, so I think that's great. And I think it's also great to point out two things from that. One, um, your first point uh, earlier that seniors should always ask questions if they're not sure. unsure of something or it doesn't make sense that they should, shouldn't be afraid to ask about it. Uh, and two, that you're educating people about Medicare in general and not just about fraud uh, and open enrollment, but um, these other factors. I think it's great that you're going out and doing presentations and educating seniors about things that they need to be on the lookout for because they might not know about it otherwise. Um, you know, they get their information from, you know, newspapers and TV and, and word of mouth from friends and neighbors, but um, to go to a presentation at their senior center with one of you and learn um, about this observation status, it gives them an opportunity to know about something they should ask about if they happen That's to go right. to the hospital. So. Many, many seniors do not know about it that, sure. when, when I mention it. Yes. Right. So are there other things that you tend to bring up um, at these presentations outside of fraud that, that people need to know about? I can give you a couple more. I, I guess I can give you another question that they ask um, often. So when I'm speaking about Medicare fraud, um, and of course I'm, I'm, I'm explaining that you should guard your Medicare number. Mm -hmm. 
um, because your Medicare number is also your Social Security number. Right. At least, you know, one person always raises their hand and they ask the question, well, why does Medicare keep the same Medicare number? Um, I'm sorry, why does Medicare's Medicare number res exactly the same as the Social Security number, mm -hmm. right? And um, I get that question many times, right? Because it would, of course, make more sense if there was a unique uh, Medicare number. Like, like commercial insurance does for other right, people. Like right, like commercial insurance, mm -hmm. then it'll probably reduce fraud and probably cut it in half. <laughs> but what I tell them that the, the reasons for that, there's really two reasons, time and money. Yeah. Right. Time and money. So there have been a few proposals. I know the Social Security Administration, they proposed um, a unique ID number for Medicare for Medicare patients. Mm -hmm. um, Congress has passed, has tried to pass um, bills to change the Medicare number and give it a unique ID number. Um, but you have to realize that a change like this would cause a complete, would need a complete overhaul of the whole system. So we're right. talking about billions of dollars. Sure. Right, to change that. And not only that, um, new Medicare cards are going to have to be issued out. That's extra money, that's extra time, that's extra confusion. All right. Not only that, but providers, all of the providers across the country would have to change their systems and update their systems with new Medicare numbers. Right. So imagine the time, the confusion. Right. the amount of money that that would cost. Sure. I think many people are, uh, they just don't want to deal with it right yeah. now. So I don't know sure. if that's going to happen in our lifetime. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great uh, topic for you to share. That's maybe one of those hot topics in <laughs> Medicare that not everybody knows about. So I appreciate it. <laughs> sure. uh, I do want to thank you both for sharing all of this great information about open enrollment and about fraud, because I think it's really great. I uh, will say two final things. One, um, Charles, I forgot to ask you what the, um, effective date is. If people make changes during open enrollment, when will they see those changes yes, take effect? Yes, the effective date will be January 1st January of 1st. 2015. Great. And I do want to remind people that if they don't notice Medicare fraud on their summary or they're confused about anything that happens to their Medicare, that they should call the uh, Senior Medicare Patrol for advice and assistance in resolving right. that fraud. And actually, if you call up Medicare mm -hmm. and you mentioned fraud, we have a partnership now with Medicare. Wonderful. So they're going to refer that case right to us anyway, so great. call us directly. <laughs> yes, great. Thank you both so much again for sharing your time with us today. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging and is made possible by donations to the foundation. To become a sponsor for Aging Insights programs, please go to our website at www.njfoundationforaging.org or call our office at 609-421-0206. All the previous shows may be viewed on our website. We'd like to remind you to find out about senior services in your area. Please contact your county office on aging. Their numbers are on our website, or you can call the state hotline at 877-222-3737. Thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights. And remember, aging is everyone's business.